So I see swim goggles, I see a swim cap, and I see syrup. I'm sensing a really big mess in our future, am I right? Oh, you are correct. Uh, this is a classic physics thought experiment. Simply stated, it is thus, that you can swim as fast in syrup as you can in regular old water. Well, the syrup is thicker, so I would think that it would slow down your movement through it. That might be true, but it also might be true that the thicker syrup gives you more to push against with your hands. So what this boils down to then is whether those two forces cancel each other out, right? That's what we gotta get down and dirty and test. On the surface, you'd think that swimming in syrup could only end with drowning in syrup. But maybe not. The thick resistance that slows you down might also mean you've got more to push against, increasing your propulsion. Like Adam says, it's a classic physics dilemma. And we'll be testing it with real swimmers. Sweet. You know, I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say we need to get a pool, a bunch of syrup, and start testing. You're right, but with two notable exceptions. One, we're not gonna use real maple syrup, we're gonna use guar gum, which should allow us to get exactly the viscosity we want. Two, we couldn't find a pool that would allow us to fill it with syrup. We're gonna have to make our own. In fact, I propose we make two pools, one filled with water, one filled with heavy syrup, swim in each and compare our times. It's that simple. Well, let's dive right in. Okay. Well, this may look like just a clearing in the hills of Dublin Pleasanton, California, but by the time we're done with it, by the end of the day, when we're through digging a pair of 75 foot long pools with these puppies, this will be an experimental space on the leading edge of fluid dynamics, swimming in goo. Before they tackle the swimming or the science, the boys need to show their blue collar credentials. And why do you know? It's poetry in motion. The plan is to fill one trench with plain water purchased from the city and the other with water thickened with guar gum. Both of these rustic lap pools need to be 75 feet long. Amazing what you can do with the right tools. That took us about an hour and a half, but now we've got at least a couple hours or more straightening them out, making them into proper pools. We are now about to line these in heavy plastic and fill them with water. And we're using four layers of heavy plastic, hopefully to keep any leaks from happening. We've tried to eliminate as many sharp objects on the bottom. Perfect. <laughs> wow, it's freaking dark in here. Okay, everybody just stay put, make sure you Hang on to your edges. We're ready for water. An Alameda County fire truck pumps the water. And the plastic lining, bolstered by some hefty plywood decking, seems to be holding. That's uh, turned out to be a heck of a pool. Dude, this thing looks awesome. Dig a hole, we got some plastic, you got a pool, huh? <laughs> Ah, well, if the other trench is ready, let's uh, make some goo and fill it. Okay. It's time to get sticky for science. So today, we're testing two magic bullet myths, which are myths about bullets doing something that they're not designed to do. And the first one comes from the second best television show of all time. MacGyver? You got it. <laughs> I like this one already. Now, I know this is all just special effects, but I'm really interested to see if this is going to work in real life. So what is it? All right, MacGyver is on a cargo ship. He's trying to rescue a boy who's locked behind a steel door. He empties out six bullets and ignites the gunpowder using an empty cartridge, and then blows a lock open. Huh, I wouldn't have thought of that one. Mac's method is to pack the powder from six bullets inside a shred of cloth. He stuffs that in the lock, shoves in an empty cartridge, and smacks the firing cap with the butt of his gun. Hang on, I thought MacGyver had an extreme aversion to guns. True, he took a 38 from a guard he just KO'd, but let's not forget, there's a child's life at stake here. Sorry, forgot that. But still, it's a loaded gun. I mean, why wouldn't he just point it at the lock and shoot it out? Well, he thought it would ricochet straight back off a steel door. So what do you guys think? I say, let's give it a try. Let's do it. <laughs> 